Okay, so when UCT had to shift the entire teaching and learning enterprise into the online space, it was very clear that there was a lot we didn't know. We didn't know about how students were going to be able to manage this new environment, both in terms of logistics and also their home environment, what that would really mean for them in terms of being able to, to participate fully. So what UCT did is they deployed a kind of a rapid uh, data collection tool and this was aimed at collecting information about students in the spaces that they were currently uh, existing in, so contextually relevant information. And what that did for us is it allowed us to better support students in that particular moment of need. And subsequent to that, the uh, performance data analytics has allowed us to, in some ways, assess the efficacy of the support that we provided. And it's really this extra level of detail that has really grounded our understanding of what we could be doing to support students, not only when they come to us for advice, but also in a proactive and continuous way. And these data analytics, although developed in a time of crisis, has really given us a glimpse of how powerful a long term comprehensive data analytics strategy could be in developing truly effective student support. Well, I think that if UCT is going to take student success seriously, we can't be tinkering at the edges and we really need to commit to strategy. Globally at home have really high impact on student persistence, retention and ultimately success. So the other thing that we know is that many of the challenges faced by South African students are systemic. So we need to tackle those challenges in a systemic way. I think that a mature and coherent data analytics strategy will help us not only identify these challenges wherever they might exist, uh, be it in the curriculum or in uh, an individual's history. And more importantly, it allows us to really intervene timelessly and appropriately. Now, UCT has become a partner of the Sia Puma Le Le network, and I think by doing this, they have already acknowledged that data analytics is going to be a powerful tool to drive student success. But I think that to fully realize this potential, we need a significant investment in data analytics capacity across the institution. I think that, you know, the the one of the major concerns with 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 using data analytics to understand individuals is that it tends to feel like we're dehumanizing the people we're trying to understand. And so that's where I think data ethics plays a very important role in guiding not just the way in which we um, do the an analyses, but also the ways in which we think about how this impacts individuals in a real way. So, um, you know, anonymity, confidentiality, these are all uh, very technical issues of data analytics, that, uh, of data ethics that are important. But I think more, more importantly, we really need to be thinking about our philosophy, our ethical philosophy around how we use it to do no harm. Um, so we want to do good, but it's also important to think about doing no harm. So I think that there is a lot of power in data analytics to help us improve uh, services, systems and support after the fact, right? We can look at how we done at something and we can go back and improve that. But ultimately, that strategy, which is an important one, is not that relevant to a student who's on the ground and in a moment of crisis and need. Um, and it is those students that we also need to be targeting and also need to be helping, not just the ones that come after them. And that's where things like uh, rapid response systems, early warning systems are incredibly important. 
um, because we need these catch nets. Uh, we know that for, particularly for first year students, it's a very high risk group of students. Um, and it is very important that we have continuous data uh, capture uh, and systems in place that don't just identify students at risk, but are also able to intervene at that moment of risk. And um, the literature shows that this is a highly effective uh, method of improving retention in particularly first year students. Yeah, I mean, just what's been what's been really interesting, uh, and this is very anecdotal, but just listening to conversations uh, by colleagues around a kind of excitement about knowing their students better. I think uh, I've heard from different places, you know, comments like, you know, we've never known as much as we do right now about our students. We've never been in a place to respond as quickly um, as we are doing right now. And I think that speaks to the power of having the data on hand, uh, but also that it is an ex it's being shared in way and in an accessible way with people who are on the ground and able to act on that data. And I think that's been a major shift from holding institutional data in one space that comes out, you know, in an annual report. And maybe someone can look at that, read it and, and, and make some improvements in their program or course down the line. And I think this has excited um, staff generally. Uh, about uh, just having a much whole, much more holistic picture of the students. I think there's still a lot of work to be done in that space in terms of integration across various levels. So everything from course convenience up to sort of institutional planning, we need a kind of level of integration that um, really makes for powerful um, strategic development uh, along the whole, um, the whole trajectory of a student's path um, to graduation. I think when we originally um, started the Sia Pumalela proposal project and, and put in this bid, we were kind of very much at the we were very much at the beginning of um, thinking about how this could impact our institution kind of leaning on um, examples further abroad on what kinds of 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 real um, success this has in in your student pathways and that sort of thing. But I think the COVID moment making uh, creating these new niches for data analytics use and really energizing the space has um, almost awaken the imagination of the entire of the entirety of the institution in a way that wasn't really there when we first started. We're sort of a small group of people uh, putting together this bid and kind of getting it just just getting it in. And I think that what has happened since then and we see that with people uh, participating in the network activities in much larger numbers than I would have expected and asking a lot of questions um, in terms of what can the data do for me and my students in a way that I think uh, we haven't really considered before. It, it's been very much uh, uh, in people's thinking that this the data analytics is something the university has to do and they do it in some capacity um, to a shift towards data analytics for supporting me in the classroom to better support my students. And I think that has been uh, very exciting in terms of, of what's to come over the next few years. Yeah, I would say for me, what that would feel like is a significantly improved and seamless student experience and playing a part in um, in helping create that that experience for students, um, wh whether it's through my work in the academic advising space or through collaboration in the data analytics space. I think there's a, a lot of synergies between those spaces that uh, allow for 
uh, that really will have eventually impact on on an improved student experience and ultimately student success and the student experience uh, are my objectives and the improvement of those things are my objectives for um, the next couple of years and whatever I can do to play a small part in that would be um, a success in my books. I imagine UCT to be an adaptive and responsive institution that can meet students where they are at. Uh, 